Hey guys, Ben here. I thought I'd show you my latest project. This is an electronic braille system with two characters that are controlled by the PC parallel port. So I'll open this up and show you what's built inside. Uh, the actual braille modules themselves are commercially made. Uh, these are made by a company called Metech or Metech. I'll put a link in the description. Um, the trouble is they the drivers they come with are a bit proprietary, so I built my own driver circuit, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, right now, I just wanted to show you how these things are built. Each pin in the Braille display is uh, controlled by a piezoelectric bender actuator. So what we have here is a long, uh, thin panel, or rod almost, that flexes up or down like this when voltage is applied to it. So uh, if I fire this thing up, you can see the rod moving in response to the voltage applied to it. Just like that. Uh, the trouble is the voltages have to be pretty high to make the piezoelectric effect work. So in this case, the device is rated for about 200 volts. Uh, a zero volt signal causes the pin to be up and a 200 volt signal causes the pin to be down or something like that. Maybe it's the other way. So the, um, the driver circuit has to be a high voltage amplifier to make this work. So here's some notes I made on the project. Uh, the input signal to the amplifier circuit is just zero to five volts. Uh, this is coming from a PC parallel port and I used some 74 HC uh, series logic chips which all work on a five volt uh, positive signal. And the output needs to be 200 volts down to zero and back up to 200 again. So really this is our input and output signal that we want from the transistor amplifier. And here's a, 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 a schematic of the actual amplifier itself. It's really just a transistor with a resistor going up to a 200 volt supply. And um, thankfully the the actual load here, the piezo element themselves, are entirely capacitive. So when, the, when we're supplying 200 volts to it, the current draw is zero after a certain time. And that means we can use a pretty large value of resistor here, because it doesn't really matter how fast the pin moves. In fact, inside the piezoelectric device itself, they included a 470K resistor, just to keep the pins from snapping, I think. So charging the piezo element up doesn't need to happen quickly. And therefore, we can use a high value resistor here. And that makes the circuit a lot easier to design. Um, speaking of design, choosing a transistor for this circuit is, is not the easiest thing because you need to handle the high voltage. So I used a ZTX458, which is a, a relatively low power but high voltage transistor that I came across when researching uh, deflection amplifiers for the scanning electron microscope project. So it has a nice hefty 400 volt emitter to collector voltage, and the gain is pretty good too. Minimum 100, and um, on the second page, it's, you can see that it's about a typical of about 200 gain, which is great. Uh, you don't have to give it a lot of base current, and you can get the thing to turn on quite easily. Um, It'll also dissipate a whole watt, which we didn't get anywhere close to in this project, but that's quite nice. And this is about 60 cents, so that's, that's quite a nice part to be using. Um, I just went through the power calculations. The resistor will only dissipate just under a tenth of a watt when it's uh, pulled down to ground, and so that there's ground on the one side of the resistor in 200, so that's well in line. And then when the transistor is not conducting, total power dissipation is, is just about zero. The two chips are 74HC373 chips, which are um, octal D-type flip-flops, or really they're sort of latches. And so what I did was I took eight bits from the parallel port data register and plugged them into the inputs on both octal D flip-flops and then took the eight outputs from each of those chips and plugged those into the bases of the transistors. So I can select between either character. Each Braille character has eight pins. 
And uh, this allows me to select which character I want to update just by using the single 8-bit data bus from the PC uh, parallel port. So if we go back to that program I have, I can turn on the bits on and off in the parallel port and then select which Braille character I want to update. I also added these tactile buttons underneath the um, Braille characters so that when these are pushed down, the button depresses ever so slightly. And uh, that can be read off in the parallel port status register, which is input only for the computer. The power supply is a self-contained unit that's, um, let's see if we can see the model number here. It's an ultra volt 1C24 series, a bunch of other uh, modifiers on, on the model number there. And this is adjustable from zero to a thousand volts. And I have it set on about 150. I didn't use the full 200 volts of the um, Braille device. I mean, it's rated up to 200, but it also works on less. And the voltage is adjusted with a simple uh, pot here. And the input to this supply is 24 volts DC, which is nice because I can use one of these uh, an international power adapter. These are actually pretty cool. Uh, the plug can be removed, and then I can put like a European power adapter or plug style in there. And it's always 24 volts worldwide. So let me know what you think. Um, for future videos, let me know if you're interested more in seeing like fundamental circuit design stuff or just a, a rundown of the projects I've been building. Hopefully I'll try to get a little of each in, but uh, feel free to leave any feedback and I will see you next time.